morning, looking at data and statistics, we very, very briefly looked at surveys, what to ask, like the questions you're going to ask, and how you ask it and the different kinds of data you result uh, from them. Okay? Now, after what and how, the very obvious question that we didn't ask was, well, who are you going to give these questions to? Okay? Who are you going to ask? Now, whoops. Who to ask? This question has two answers to it, really. Uh, one is really expensive and time consuming and almost always impossible. And the other one is kind of like a compromise but has lots of disadvantages to it. So next week, everyone's household is going to be doing the census, census right? And the census is the first answer to the question of well, who do you ask? And the, the answer of the census is just ask everyone, okay? Now let me be a little more specific on that. Well, we say everyone, okay? A census is asking everyone, and I'm just going to be a little more specific here, to say everyone in the target population. Everyone in the target population. Now, that phrase, target population, is pretty important. So let's just underline that, right? The target population is, well, the questions you're asking, who are they relevant to, right? Depending on uh, what you're asking, maybe, you know, adults are irrelevant to your survey, or maybe students are irrelevant to your survey, or maybe people in another country, etc, etc, right? So the target population is, who is your survey relevant to? Yeah. Like a s particular generation, maybe? Yeah, you could slice it up however you like, a particular generation, only men, only women, only, you know, whichever whatever <laughs> other number of answers you have. Mm -hmm. So, who is the survey or the questions uh, relevant to? But of course, everyone knows, a census, while it's going to give you, it's got your best chance for accurate responses, it's not a guarantee, by the way, it could still be inaccurate, uh, what's the glaring disadvantage of doing a census? A census. There's a lot of people. Yeah, that's right. Like, if you're saying absolutely everyone, uh, it's expensive, it's time consuming, which is another way of saying it's expensive. And um, as a result, it's oft, it often just can't be done. Like it's, it's impossible or it's impractical to do. Um, which is why this whole idea of doing the census once every five years, it's a big deal. Everyone's got to stay put in a particular place to do it. Otherwise, you've got completely inaccurate data. So <coughs> census, censuses, censi, hundred <laughs> censuses, um, they're wonderful. They've got the best chance for accuracy, but they're very hard. Okay. So does anyone know what it's called when you don't ask absolutely everyone? Starts with an S. Selection. Ooh, it is a selection, selection right? <laughs> um, the special word they use for it is a sample. Oh, that's the one. Okay, so maybe you've uh, you've heard of this phrase before. So sample is just a portion of target population. It's a portion. Now, clearly, this is um, this is being devised to overcome these exact problems here. But in solving these problems of expense and time and practicality, it sort of introduces its own problems. If you're only interviewing or questioning a small group of people, what kinds of problems might emerge? Well, your sample size is quite small, so you might not have an accurate representation. Okay, good. So the whole idea is, well, I'll talk about that in a second. The whole idea is you have a small portion, right? And then you extrapolate from that data out to the entire population. But that might not be accurate at all. So you're gonna say it's just less accurate because you're not talking to absolutely everyone, right? You can introduce, we talked about uh, reporting bias, uh, cognitive bias. You can introduce sample bias. And I'm gonna talk in detail about this in a second uh, before I give you, after I give you some examples. Sample bias is, okay, your answers to your questions are all gonna be inclined in a particular direction precisely because of who exactly you're asking. Okay, so I will uh, I will talk about that in a second. But can we just talk about some examples? When are you actually going to get like a sample um, that you guys encounter in daily experience? Yeah, like um, at a workplace. Yeah, and I want everyone in the workplace to answer questions yeah. about the working conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, that's fantastic. Just, Let's say workplace survey. Workplace, workplace survey. You're almost guaranteed that not everyone's going to answer the survey because like. You know, if you don't make it compulsory, it's just, who's got time for that? Okay, so people are going to skip it. I don't know if anyone was noticing when it was like, you know, 
the whole turbul shot and that kind of thing. They were election polls, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I was little, I always, I never understood election polls because, you know, on the news they say, 35% of voters would, you know, vote for this guy, right? And I was like, well, if we know that 35% of voters would go for this guy or that woman or whoever, haven't we already done yeah. the election? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, do we need to go through? And what I did not understand was clearly they weren't obviously asking everyone. They're just talking about a portion of the population. They'll just ask a small group of people. Uh, they might ask, say, you know, uh, let's just think about it this way. The population of Australia, the last number I had in my head was 24 million. I think it might be a bit more than that, maybe 26. Yeah, not sure. Not sure. So let's think back to the work we did in ratios under, um, under MM1. Okay, if I say asked 2,400 people, okay, 2,400 people, and then I say, well, okay, what is that in relation to the whole population of Australia? What is that? What's the relationship between them? Twenty four zero 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 zero. Isn't that how many people are in that Yeah, almost. Yeah. <laughs> We're a little bit smaller than that, but it looks like to me it's. 10,000 times, 10,000 times? Yeah. 10,000 times fewer than the whole population, right? So I could say within this group of people, you know, if some number of them vote for this or that, I'm going to multiply that by 10,000 to try and extrapolate to the entire target population. Okay. So election polls, uh, the thing I want to write down for you is TV ratings. And does anyone know what the name of the company that organizes TV ratings is? In Australia, it's a company called AC Nielsen. Uh, and the only reason I know that it's called AC Nielsen is because I was actually part of, for like a year and a half, uh, the sample of the population who had a little box attached to their TV. And every time I turned on the TV, the box would switch on. And I actually had a special remote for this box. It said, okay, who's watching, right? And the box knew all of the ages of the people in my household, all five of us. And I'd say, okay, um, I'm watching, and my son is watching, and my daughter is watching. So there's all of their ages, and they say, okay, from there, clearly not everyone has such a box in their house. I don't have it anymore. They've moved on to someone else. They're going to say, like, have you ever wondered, like, oh, 3.4 million people watched the finale for Game of Thrones this, yeah. you know, this way. It's like, how do they know that? Did they go and count? The answer is no. They did something like this, right? They took a small portion of the population, maybe one ten thousandth of the population. They said, how many of those people are watching? And then they multiplied it up. And there was a little more to it than that, but that's the basic idea, okay? So all of these kinds of ways of doing it. Now, these problems of um, sample bias, right? This is very, very important. So we need to think about the kinds of problems that can emerge. And I'm going to give you some examples of who gets asked. And therefore, I want you to sort of workshop with me. Well, what kinds of problems are going to emerge here? So we talked about the um, four ways of posing questions to people. Do you remember what the four ways were? Can you think back like an hour and a half? What were the four ways? Like after you've got your questions, how do you pose that to people? Face-to-face. Okay, number one, face-to-face. -face. We'll go from like most expensive to least expensive. After face-to-face, -face, there was phone. the phone interviews, then paper, paper and then... Online. Okay, so those in, are in order of price, right? Now, if I say, did a phone survey, right? And if I did it, for instance, let's say 10 a.m. on a Monday. Okay. Yeah, it is annoying, right? 10 a.m. on a Monday, right? And I rang people's homes, okay? I'm going to get a portion of the target population. There will be people at home at 10 a.m. There will be lots of people. But now, okay, so who will it be? And the answer is, it's obviously going to be skewed towards retirees, people who aren't, you know, working anymore. Who else is it going to be skewed towards? Uh, people who are unemployed, um, stay-at-home mums and dads, all that kind of thing, right? Um, Full-time <laughs> students, etc. Well, part-time students? Well, anyway. So you can see, just by asking in a particular way, a sample bias is introduced. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, you know, election polls and that kind of thing. Let's think about, as another example, what if you go to a particular area, right? So if you want to do like a paper questionnaire, you're limited, like you've got to physically go somewhere, okay? What problems might emerge if you do it, like if you go to an area, you do an election poll, what might happen? Yeah, fantastic. So some areas are clear, it's like, yep, this is definitely coalition, or this is definitely labor, like it'll be a landslide victory. So depending on where you go, a new sample bias gets introduced. 
Okay, well, suppose I want to overcome that. I want to go to a place where I'm going to get people from all over. So maybe I go to like Central Station. Central Station, right? Like if I go to a train station, the nature of a train station is you get people from all over the place. So I'm trying to solve this problem, but in doing so, I introduce a new problem. No one's going to come stop and talk to you. <laughs> okay, yeah, people at Central <laughs> are all in a hurry to go somewhere. Yeah, okay, so exactly. the only people I'm going to get are a very, very small set of that. But yeah, even further than that, people. who are the kinds of people I'm getting if I go to a Working train station? Train people. Okay, only the kinds of people who are commuting that particular way.